Okay, welcome. Here's our, <clears throat> excuse me, here's our Design 350 lecture. It's Tuesday the 23rd at 11. We're on a Google Meet and the recording is on. And so this is our only meeting for this week. <clears throat> excuse me again. Um, we have uh, Thanksgiving or Indigenous Peoples Day coming up on Thursday or Friday, depending on which you happen to celebrate, or maybe both. And uh, Thursday and Friday, uh, Saturday and Sunday are also holidays for us too. So you will see that there is nothing due this week. Uh, well, let me go show you that nothing is due this week. Here we go. You'll see that nothing is due this week. Any work that you do is just considered professional development, either catching up on work that you're behind on, or uh, just looking ahead, or maybe even, hopefully, um, not paying attention to schoolwork at all, certainly not for this class, and enjoying your family and friends and holiday activities. That's um, kind of how we've set things up. However, if you would like to, you can look at our project number three and just have a little bit in mind. And if nothing else, I'll go over it for you so that you can go, whew, I got it. I can take some time off because the project three will not be onerous, won't be over the top hard for us to work on. So let's take a look and see what project three is. I'm going to look at it on the Google map. So project three, you will see here is our project two site. And here is the site next door, currently a religious um, institution, Seventh-day Adventist Church. And the goal of this one is to show how a commercial property can be joined with a residential property. This is considered commercial, even though it's it's not, right? It's actually residential with a variance to be able to put a large facility on it. It's RD2, and they've said that religious groups are able to use RD2. But we want to con kind of combine these two sites. Um, and not that they're going to combine them. The idea is that the owners of the church site, which happens to be the church, uh, would purchase the room, the lot next door to do more of what they want to do and to do it in keeping with the housing element for the Art and Arcade area for Sacramento County and um, to do you know, follow fair housing and economic development. So we're going to take the work that you did on this lot. You've already got the lot drawn. Add this lot to it and do a little bit of work. So let's see what we want to do. Um, so you, you've you seen this before because that was in the last one. Urban infill, underutilized properties to address the area's housing shortage. So that's our number one goal. And then you saw that the city of Sacramento had some goals that went along with it, that while you're doing that, please do some other things. So we are still looking at addressing the area's housing shortage. And I think by this time in the semester, you'll, you'll agree because you've done a lot of study on it there's a pr pretty significant housing shortage in Sacramento, Sacramento County, really everywhere in California, but it goes past California too. And so we're going to look at urban infill again, and this is a classic case. We've got an area that is pretty well developed. Um, many of the lots are fully developed, although many of them are single residences and could get some more but um, now we've got not just 
SB9 that we're thinking of. We're not thinking of just taking that lot and subdividing it and adding some tiny houses. We're thinking now about a little bit more. And so this is from the uh, strategy four of the Sacramento County land use element. This is part of the Fair Housing Act reporting requirements of the AFFH. So they call it the Built Environment Preservation and Enhancement. Okay, so each of the existing communities have special needs. They look at that and they say, yep. And so they're saying right here that it's that that they're willing to look at special needs and unique opportunities. And they know particularly Arden Arcade and Carmichael are almost full build out. There is not a lot of room left. And so if you're in the Arden Arcade area, which this project would be, um, they will especially take into account special needs and unique opportunities. Okay, And the goal would be enhancing quality of life in every community. So how can we make the quality of life better? Utilize vacant or underutilized lands. That would be the exist example of the 4632 lot that we just worked on. And to accommodate future economic and population growth. So if you can do both of those things, you're going to be very well looked at for special needs or unique opportunities in the Arden Arcade area. So we want to make sure that we're using an underutilized lot. We want to accommodate future economic and population growth. Okay, so that's the basis of what we want to do on this project. And here we, we, we see it again, right? This is a Sacramento County Urban Growth Accommodation. Urban Growth Accommodation. Individual projects may be approved or denied at higher or lower densities based on their community and site suitability. So that's what our proposal will have to do. Show that it's suitable and that it goes with the community and that we're utilizing underutilized land, economic population growth, economic and population growth. And then this just sort of restates it. They, this group, this um, department took the words right out of this and used them again. So that's really cool, right? There's, there's, good ability for us to make a proposal because we're following the plan. And that's really important that you understand the local plan um, and use those exact words, if you can, in your proposal. So let's see what the proposal is going to try to do. And again, I've written it up for you. You don't have to do a lot this, this, um, this time through. You've got a template that you can pop this into, and I'm only going to ask for a few drawings because we have this week, which I'm not really counting, and we have next week. Okay, and then we're into review. So let's take a look and see what we've got. This site, 4600, is currently owned and utilized by a religious group. There it is, Carmichael Seventh-day Adventist Church. And the property owners want to do something to help meet the Arden Arcade Urban Infill Strategy. And they want to do it by, in addition to their religious facility, also providing low-market-rate apartment-style housing that is 
available to the general population. They are saying no real restrictions on it. You don't have to be a member of their, and some places do, and it would be allowable. Um, you will often see religious groups put up housing for members of their religious community. That is possible, and it's allowable under the AFFH. But in this case, they're going to say, no, no, we just want low market rate apartment style housing, and they want it available to the general population. Anybody who has money for a low market rate apartment could apply. Okay, and then additionally, they want to develop some portion of their operations to support an innovation space to serve the local area. Now, we don't know exactly, you know, what all of their operations entail, but they want to develop some operation to support an innovation space. Now, technically, an innovation space um, can be many things, but I think that down here, they want it to be used as a small business incubator to serve the local area. And in this case, this area is intended for the use of members of their religious community. So to take advantage of this innovation space, you would need to be a member of that religious community. That doesn't violate any fair housing or anything like that. And so that's perfectly reasonable and perfectly allowable. And you would think, yeah, I, I can see that. You know, you want to give your, um, your group a leg up. Uh, you could do something like that. Okay. And so to do this double thing, low market rate housing for the general, general population and an innovation space to serve the local area, okay, they want to accomplish that by purchasing the neighboring lot, 4632, which at this point, as you know, is underutilized, underdeveloped, okay? And they would design and build a pair of two-story apartments, four units each. So they would put eight units on there. Now, that's perfectly allowable under um, this thing that says higher or lower densities based on the community and site suitability. So you would make the, the claim that this is perfectly reasonable. There's already parking nearby. There's religious services nearby. There's lots of stuff nearby. So it's very suitable for um, two, two story, four unit each. So that's, that's like a three with one above, a two with two above. It's not that big, and particularly, uh, the apartments would meet low rate targets, market rate targets, by limiting the size. So you're going to probably be looking at maybe 600 to 900 square foot apartments. That does not take up a large footprint. As a matter of fact, you wouldn't even need it to be two story. You could get those you know, four small units uh, down, you know, all in one story. Um, but, but that's, that's, it's, it, they're looking at, at um, all of this on one lot, two, two story units. Um, there are some very nice samples. You can just look around at some two story, two uh, townhomes and see how they're done. Um, just to take a look and see. There's some nice ones in Davis at, I think it's called Green Terrace that you could look at. You can look all over the place to find out how you might want to lay those out. And in addition 
to these units since they're small there would be a common area utilities for laundry personal storage outdoor cooking equipment and guest restroom facilities okay so so you would have the two small two story units and some sort of um, common area laundry and usage. So I'll let you kind of ponder that and think about that. And we'll talk about it next week of how you might want to be able to do that. Um, the goal is that that natural and open feeling to 4632 would still be maintained. That it there would still be a lot of vegetation and trees and it would be a sort of a natural type feel okay in addition you'll see that there is um this is a food bank carmichael admin adventist community services there is a food bank on that site and so they're saying that 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 will stay as it is all of this parking over here and the food bank would stay um and it would probably the build out of the innovation center 4000 square feet it's about one tenth that's less than one tenth of this lot um plus the other thing would all be done on this on this site and so you could think about how that would play out and how that would work okay and and we're not going to do a ton of work like we did before with the with the utilities and the tiny houses and all that kind of stuff. Um, we're going to really just be looking at the flow and the layout and how do these things tie together to be one complete um, uh, mixed use development that benefits this area so that's what we're going to be thinking about this time okay so that's what the that's what the project is so you can see we sort of have moved through a series of projects from oh i just have a lot and i want to put some tiny houses on it and so i'm just going to <clears throat> take a lot and do some work and then we went into a splitting the lot and maximizing <clears throat> potentially the income that could be gotten from that lot and now we're doing um, a little bit more complex again which is a mixed use land development that is taking an existing special use and adding more special use to meet the goals of the um, planning element Okay, the housing element so what's going to be required pretty much you've got your letter of intent but we're just going to do a part of it we're just going to talk about access to local services you should have this done already because you just did that in the last one so there's just a little bit of a difference in the letter of intent where you'll cut and paste this information in to your letter of intent and the drawing packet is really just going to be three sheets i'm just going to ask you to do existing site plan a demolition plan and a proposed site plan now if you look at the assessor's parcel this one doesn't give us a very good description um when we look at the description it's it's just saying you have to know what this other lot is you have to know what lot 130 of arcade park is excluding this <laughs> so which is right that 428 by 146 um and so we don't have lot 130 of arcade park the description of it and maybe we could go find it uh but i'm just going to suggest that you take uh the google map and you do a very good tracing and you know what this length is so after you've traced it you can match it up very well you know what this length is 
and what this length is. So you can get this in there very well, very, very close to scale, and do a tracing of it, and that will be fine because I'm not looking in this one for the existing um, exact property. Well, I mean, you'll do them, but I'm not looking at the, the lot measurements to be exact. Okay, <laughs> so you can see what they've done. They've taken an existing lot, and this was already carved out of it. So now we're going back and getting that back. That happens. That does happen. Um, where you, and, and you're not recombining the lot. They're just repurchasing the lot. Okay, so so that's what the, that's what the project is. Right? And you can see the value of something like this. You know, a small innovation center, <coughs> a, bu a business incubator, excuse me, that can help serve the community members of this church with a business by serving the local community is really a cool idea. Okay, so that is, that's the project for next week. It's, the project is due in two weeks. <clears throat> there is no progress check. So there is nothing due this week. Okay, no discussions, nothing like that. The goal is that you get to um, appropriately um, spend your time as best fits your needs. If you're behind on some work, this is a great time to go back, catch up, or to make your work better, or to spend your time with your holiday plans that are always a good brain break. All right, so there we go. That's what we've got for this week. Uh, there will be no class session or lab session tomorrow. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are holidays. So our next time together will be on Monday, the 29th. All right. Have a great break.